As I'm sure you'll all agree, brumation can be pretty boring. But it can also be quite useful. Whenever Christmas comes around, I just view it as a nice excuse to get new things for me animals. I mean, like, clothes and whatever are just... meh. But UV bulbs and electrical fittings, that's where it's at. Plus, because lots of me reptiles are in brumation at the moment, it is just a convenient time to start changing things around in their setups without having to upset them all that much. So what I'm going to be doing in today's video is setting up some of the gadgets that I got over Christmas and discussing some different points about the ones that I've never had before. So with that, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and let's get straight into the video. Not long ago now, I actually did an unboxing from Arcadia Reptile, wherein they sent me quite a bit of new technology, including a new heat lamp for Charmy Bearded Dragon. Now this lamp, which I'll talk more about in a second, was actually too big to fit in any of the bulb guards that I had at the time, so I knew that if I wanted to use it, I was going to have to get some new fixtures. Now because of this, I did get in contact with John Courtney Smith, who's the head dude over at Arcadia HQ, um, about what would be the best fitting to fit this bulb in, and I decided to get two 14cm diameter Arcadia reflector domes. Upon opening them, I was really pleasantly surprised by just how strong the sort of mounting brackets and the clamps are, although I'm not going to be using the clamps. Although saying that, it was quite hard to get them to go together because the pieces wouldn't fit together quite how is shown on the box. But after a little bit of fiddling, I got there and once I was happy with it all, it was time to turn to Char the Bearded Dragon's setup and get these things installed. Now, poor Char, uh, he's been in brumation for several months now and he hasn't moved at all, but he was going to be right in the way where I was working, so I did have to pick him up and move him, and he was just so dopey when I was picking him up and moving him and putting him under his slate into the little burrow that I dug out for him. Um, so I did really feel kind of mean, but he did settle down pretty quickly, and I don't know about you, but the way he curled up with his face fence facing the entrance... I couldn't really tell if he looked really cute or whether he looks completely evil, but whatever, tell me what you think down in the comments. So Dragon safely stowed away in the under slate locker. Um, I started taking away the cage guards and removing the 250 watt ceramic heat emitter and 50 watt DP projector that were his previous heating elements. Now you might be wondering why I'm actually removing the DP projector at this point, but just chill for a second because I'm going to explain it in a moment. Oh, and while we're at it, if you remember the little cable management hack that I showed you in a video that I'll link on screen right now, um, this did actually really come in handy with this. So after a little bit of a play about to see where I was going to put the domes, uh, I moved Char's LED over a bit because it was just going to be doing nothing but illuminating the domes where it was. Uh, I got some pilot holes on the go and then I screwed in the domes into position. Uh, and I also possibly dropped a screw where it was going to be hard to get it back. I don't care what you think, taking plastic bags off new things is satisfying whether you like it or you don't. So, um, moving swiftly on, uh, I started to put the heating elements themselves into the domes. Now the first of these is a 100 watt halogen lamp that John Courtney Smith sent to me in that unboxing. Um, and what this is going to be is Charles' main heater, because what it does is it provides the proper spectrum of near-infrared wavelengths over a nice sort of smooth area rather than having particular hot spots. Now all of this and all the technology to do with heating is something that I'm going to be discussing in a video that should be coming out in the next couple of weeks or months. So if you want to learn more about that, then do stay tuned. So in the second dome, I did just put a 100 watt Arcadia ceramic heat emitter to act as a backup throughout the winter and also throughout cold nights the rest of the year. 
Now I could equally as well have used the deep heat projector that I took out to do this and the deep heat projector is superior to the ceramic heat emitter um, but if I wanted to do that I was going to have to buy another dimmer stat so considering that I already had the ceramic and the appropriate thermostat to run it lying round I have just put that in for now. It is on me to-do list to swap it over to the DP projector, but it isn't really a major priority given that it is just a backup. So as you can see, this is all looking pretty sleek and I'm sure that Char's going to love it when he gets up in March and it's all switched on. So as to ensure that we can fully map out the thermal gradients in our reptiles enclosures, it is essential that we do have at least two thermometers per setup. Now for me Chinese leopard snakes I only actually had one thermometer that was moving between cages to check temperatures which is a bit Mickey Mouse and I also didn't have a dedicated cool end thermometer for me leopard gecko speckles and so it was sort of a no-brainer that this Christmas I was going to want a lot more thermometers. You'll notice that I do choose to use a combination of digital and dial thermometers and that I also use an infrared temperature gun to check all the temperatures again. Um, now this is a, for a very good reason which I have discussed in a previous video so if you want to learn about that then I'll throw up a link to that video in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. So last but not least for this particular sweep of electrical upgrades, we do have some new light bulbs for the line, they geckos. Now their cool down period is actually over now, so what I wanted to do was take out the two just UVB bulbs that I had in there, which are ZoomEd 10% Mini Compacts, that were just providing a gentle heat and light for the geckos. Um, and what I wanted to do was to swap these out for an actual heat lamp and a 10% Arcadia Compact UVB bulb, which is a bit stronger. All of this is being housed in the like homemade canopy that I actually built a couple of months ago because the top of this enclosure is actually really quite small, particularly the mesh portion of it. So finding things that are already mass produced, that are actual reflector domes and so on that will fit is really, really difficult. So I did just bite the bullet and build something myself. Um, and that's what you see me housing the light bulbs in in this video. Now, really annoyingly, um, having the heat bulb and the UVB bulb so close together within this unit was actually a big mistake because in a couple of hours, um, the UVB compact bulb actually blew because it overheated, which is really irritating because it means that my own bespoke compact like unit thingy can't actually work the way I wanted it to, which means I'm still struggling to get the lighting right for these day geckos. But I've had one last idea of something that I can do with some new lights on the market um, that I'm going to try putting on this enclosure and hopefully that will sort things out. So I will make an update video about that soon. So hopefully from all of this you have gathered the opinion that I am always constantly trying to upgrade my enclosures and keep them up to date with the latest science and technology. Now I do actually still have some other changes in the works, namely I've got a massive overhaul for my fish tank coming and I am also going to show you how to build a like full cork background for a pre-existing leopard gecko setup um, and that is what you can sort of see scattered about behind me. So if you do want to see all of that stuff and you did enjoy this video then please subscribe, play a bit of knock and run with the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. How many of you actually noticed red in this video? Uh, once again, um, where's the temperature thing? It's like down there somewhere. Uh, don't know if you can sort of see that, what the temperature is. Uh, 51 Fahrenheit I'm seeing and just above 10 degrees Celsius. Um, but this little fella is still coming out. It's still sort of interested in basking, which is really kind of cool.